the idea that it came from a lab is an accusation without any evidence, whereas there's plenty of scientific evidence which tells us that this is from nature, as is MERS coronavirus and the SARS coronavirus before it. Mm -hmm. So what are the scientific arguments that suggest this virus comes from the nature? So every human virus that we know of, everyone we can trace back to some animal that had it originally. So this one, as soon as the genome was sequenced back in January, you could see very clearly this, the closest virus to SARS-CoV-2 is a bat coronavirus isolated in 2013. This virus is very similar to SARS-CoV-2, but it's missing some features. And there are other two other coronaviruses that were isolated that also have very similar features to this SARS-CoV-2. So what this is telling us is that out there in animals, there are SARS-like viruses circulating. They have recombined to form the current uh, SARS-CoV-2, which then uh, acquired additional changes to be able to infect humans. So all the data are there. If you just look at them, you can see that the signatures of this virus coming from uh, bat viruses are very clear. If this virus was actually man-made, what are the what might be different? If it were man-made, mm -hmm. it would look like some virus that we already have in some laboratory. All right, and it doesn't look like any of them because someone would have had to start with those and make this virus out of it. And so that's the key. We have no such virus that's close to this. This is completely new when it emerged and obviously came from nature. So I read it somewhere that if human would like to design engineer a virus, they'll have to take some kind of the backbone of the pathogen from a known virus and mm -hmm. form upon it. Is this the same, same theory? Yeah, that's the idea. That's what I'm saying. So if you want to make a virus, you, have to, you can't start from zero. You don't know how to make a brand new virus. You start with something that exists. Or in a very simplified way of saying, is it like playing Lego that you can only play with the parts that already are there instead of just creating something out of nowhere? Yeah, that's exactly right. You can only, you can only work with parts that you have, right? You don't build, you don't make new ones. That's exactly right. Why do you think people keep inventing these conspiracy theories, even when scientists are continuously like arguing against them? Yeah, I think there are a couple of reasons for that. One of them is that the science is hard to understand for most people. When people don't understand uh, the science, then it's easy for them to turn to conspiracy because they can understand a conspiracy, right? And I think the other part of it is that people want to put blame, right, for things that happen. So this is a natural disaster, which is what viruses are. They originate from nature. And many people can't understand that or come to terms with it. So they want to blame someone. So they blame a laboratory, of course. And then of the third uh, driver is political, of course. We have individuals in the U.S. who have political motives to put blame on another country for this, another laboratory. And that drives them. I mean, it's irrational in my view. You should look at the science. But uh, those are the things I think keep driving these theories and, and they never stop. Well, obviously, pointing fingers more is easier than having a breakthrough in science. But That's let's exactly talk about right. 